Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here live with Lottie today. And we are going to get cracking on with a live show because we have had an afternoon of intriguing tech, tech mayors as I've called them. But the man who is able to build this habit and keep the brain calm and keep the brain going is a bit of a hero to me because with my MS brain, everything has been going all over the place. So let me take that off screen. And before I bring him on, I want to share a bit of his story. Uh, we started recording yesterday and then we got interrupted with tech mares and tech disasters. Uh, and so um, I, I put, put a bit of that show on yesterday, but where we're gonna pick up today is Jason Lemagere is a professional speaker that I met here in Ireland who totally inspired me with his story about how his horrific kite surfing accident on the beach at Blackpool ended up with him having a, a tragic brain injury that potentially could and should have killed him. Uh, he ended up with the whole left side of his body paralyzed. And actually, I'm reading this quote because a newspaper, the Irish Times, when they wrote about him in 2017, 10 years later, he was running a marathon. He'd done triathlons, all sorts of amazing things. But the, the newspaper said, from you'll never walk again to marathon runner within 10 years. So the accident was in 2007 in the UK. He had a baby on the way with his wonder. Then he married his wonderful wife, Liz. And then the two of them, he learned to walk with his toddler. There's not many people that you can say that about. Um, and I want to show you this photo before I bring him on screen because I think it is absolutely phenomenal. Let me put that on solo. This is him on his Just Giving page, learning to walk with Jack, who was just a few years old then. Um, and I also want to show you this quote here. Um, he learned to ride a bike again so that he could do a triathlon. So let me now take those off the screen and bring him on because I want him to get straight into his TikTok clock habits of how we can help our brains persevere, survive. And I oh, want one more photo. I've got to show you this one. The catalyst that he can walk again was to do a triathlon. So the man from being in a hospital bed, let me hide it, hiding these pictures. She says, I'm trying to multi-stream, multi, do, do everything at the same time and try and find Jason. The brain, the brain isn't working, Jason. This is a prime example of the brains going slow at certain times. So, so Jason, did I, Jason Lemagere, welcome to Live with Lottie. And did I kind of get this story mostly right? Yes, that was spot on, Lottie. Yeah, it was a great summary of the story of my first two years of my, from my accident to the day I <clears throat> ran down the aisle on my wedding day, which again is fairly unusual. I think walking with Jack, learning to walk with my son, and then running down our long wed my wedding day of both fairly unconventional, I should think you would say. <clears throat> and, and I love the fact that even before your accident, you were a university lecturer. So you were a teacher, a trainer, a coach with that. And now it's it may have taken you 10 years to run your marathon. But when I met you a couple of years ago, you'd been professional, you've been speaking and fundraising for the Northwest Air Ambulance, who you credit with saving your life. You've also been fundraising for the Irish Air Ambulance, and you've also been setting up things like a local park run because you've gone from the UK to all around the UK to Ireland, and now you live up in the most beautiful northwest corner of, of North Bumcranna, and you run a park run there every every Saturday before shutdown, obviously. Um, so. Yeah. so what was it? I suppose the burning question in my slow brain is what was it, Jason, that led you to kind of push yourself from lecturer to learn to walk again, to run up the aisle, to run marathons, do triathlons with Liz, um, and now 
do a mad, crazy, great fun fundraiser this weekend with Jack, your son, who you learned to walk with. So tell us what's in your brain first, and we'll talk more about the habit idea and concept afterwards. Yes, well, uh, one, of, one of the lines of my business card is um, crisis equals catalyst or catastrophe with a question mark. So it's basically a choice there, but it's about mindset, really. Um, if you have a crisis in your life, then you could see it as a catastrophe in terms of, although I, I would define a catastrophe as a disaster rather than a crisis, because wherever there's, if it's a crisis, there's some, some uncertainty. With a catastrophe or a disaster, there's no uncertainty. But where there's uncertainty, there's opportunity, and that's why a crisis can be a catalyst. And for me, the catalyst was to learn to walk, learn to do a triathlon, and then run a marathon, which I might never have done. I mean, I was a pretty fit guy before my accident, but uh, running wasn't on my radar. Uh, but the, you know, the, the, the way that people, many people take walking for granted, when I learned to walk again, I thought, well, how far can I go? And the triathlon, and then the marathon were the uh, the opportunities that came out of my crisis. So for me, the crisis was the catalyst rather than the catastrophe. And so, so just the, the biggest thing there, then I'm, the question I would love to know is how far can you actually push your brain after such a crisis? Like, did you have to work really hard and come up with a plan to do so? Yes. Well, I suppose. It was the physical challenges that were, were, were big challenges at that time. I thought, well, I don't want to be in a wheelchair. I'm not going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Like the doctors had predicted, the doctor told me I'd never walk again. And there's no way I was going to put up with, with that. So physically, I just wanted to go as far as I could. And I think marathon is about as far as you can go, apart from maybe walking to the South Pole or doing something else uh, incredibly ambitious but i think i'll stick with marathon as uh, as my big achievement um that's a mega <laughs> marathons are a mega achievement jason but you didn't just do marathons are you, you and liz together after you were married you did triathlons yes yes that's right and i was in as you said that magazine uh triathlon plus and uh shown to be somewhat inspirational i suppose to the triathlon community and then when i did the uh did the marathon in Dublin. I was chosen as one of the uh, humans of Dublin and I was good. I was nominated to be uh, to receive the Lord Mayor's Medal, the Dublin Lord Mayor's Medal uh, for the achievements in reaching the marathon. Um, so it was a lot of accolades around that time and I got a lot of publicity in 2017 when I was doing it. But also the same year, Liz and I decided having reached that point in our recovery and having to benefit so much from, from our running, we wanted to bring that to other people and we, we were part, became part of the parkrun movement. And so we then spent a couple of years getting parkrun established in Bonkrana. Um, we've got a fantastic parkrun team here now and it's been uh, said that it's the it's the best parkrun in Ireland, certainly the most scenic parkrun in Ireland. So if anyone is a parkrunner out there, then please come and uh, visit us in Bunkrana and see our wonderful parkrun. And this all, in a way, has come from the, the catalyst of, of my brain injury and what's driven me and Liz on to do, you know, to, to do bigger and better things. So, so Jason... I mean, it's, if, if you want to hear his full, full story, please, there's, there's lots that you can read about Jason on his, um, and you can you can find out more about the park run Van Crana for anybody who's watching now. Thank you, by the way, for joining us. Um, if you're watching now, really do appreciate it. And hello to all you viewers, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching a replay, we will be commenting along with you. Uh, but you can read and find out all about Jason at jasonlemisurier.com. And he has a fantastic, blog spot as well so that's on his website you can find his blog spot there uh but the the one of the the 
what I loved on your website, Jason, is the comments that you have uh, about what you're doing right now, both with your speaking and with the habits that you reformed and rebuilt that led you from crisis to grabbing those opportunities for yourself. I love this statement they have about rescuing you after a crisis and that you, one of the habits we need to form in our brain is resilience in an uncertain world. So can you kind of share a little bit about your how you've taken your, yes, your excitement from marathon running and adventures uh, that you've, you've done from, from a kite surfing, which as you said to me, when you used to do it, it used to be an extreme sport in 2007 with, with the kit that you had. But tell us, tell us a little bit how you formed this plan that I know goes into your TikTok clock learning and see if you can give us some top tips to build this resilience in our brains and our minds in an uncertain world. Could you share that with us, please, Jason? Yes, yes, for sure. Yeah, so... Uh... I've built on the two biggest challenges I've had in my life. The first one being to overcome this massive injury and to go through everything that we've summarized already and to thrive in the crisis that I'd created. But that I combined that with the other big challenge in my life, which was to complete a PhD, which that's what led me into an academic career. But my PhD was on a way of managing uncertainty. So the two things marry together quite well because a crisis creates a lot of uncertainty. A crisis is not a disaster because there's always some opportunities in there. And Winston Churchill is quite famously quoted as saying, never let a good crisis go to waste which implies that there is some uncertainty in there. And wherever there's uncertainty, there's, op there's both risk and opportunity. And resilience, I would say resilience, is finding the nuggets of opportunity hidden in a crisis and using them for your advantage. So that's the way I define the crisis or the, and the opportunities in a crisis. And I, I call this tick which is thrive in crisis, which means you not only come back to where you were before, but you actually use it to go on further and actually come back better than you were before. So for me, it was, you know, going from not being a runner to becoming a marathon runner. So that was my thrive in my crisis. And there's other things that I've managed to, to do that I've thrived in. So I've gone from losing my whole career as a chartered civil engineer at a university lecturer and being a rock bottom in terms of my career, but now re-establishing a new career as a professional speaker and coach and able to talk about my, uh, my challenges in life and what I've learned from them. So the first part of my TikTok clock program is as, as it says, TIC stands for Thrive in Crisis. And I would say that in order to thrive in a crisis, you need to stay calm and not panic. And I think quite often in a crisis, people jump around trying to find the best solution, go from one thing to another, and clutching at straws, and possibly creating another crisis or worse still, a disaster. So I would say, don't panic. Just look for the opportunities and be mindful in a way of, of what's actually happening. Just stay, you know, absorb all the information that's coming to you. And then once you've identified the opportunities in the tick, I suppose, the TOC stands for take opportunities consciously. So that means be conscious, be aware of what you're doing, be mindful, and don't just try and find any solution. Try and find the best solution that's going to get you in a stronger position than you were before. And 
in my case, it was uh, a case of looking for the opportunities that when I came out of my accident. But I suppose in terms of taking opportunities consciously, I was a great example of not doing that. The day I decided to go kite surfing in a strong wind. So in that case, my observations would say, don't go kite surfing. But I did, and I uh, almost lost my life over it. So I suppose that's an example of taking opportunities, on, taking opportunities unconsciously and almost creating a disaster like it really was for me. But I would say that to be able to take opportunities consciously, you've got to be conscious of what's happening and absorbing all the information you can get. So in the current COVID crisis, then there's a lot of information that you can get that will, will get you through this. And don't just panic. Don't just do anything. Try and do something that's going to put you in a better, better position than you were before. And so along with the talk, so to, to tick, you need to talk. And I would say to talk, you need to clunk. And in, in this case, clock stands for contingencies, let opportunities commence. Sorry, can you say that one again, Jason? I've got to, I've got to type that one down. So, because if, if you're hearing typing, apologies, folks, I haven't muted my microphone properly in here. <gasps> Pro-living skills, Lottie, muting the microphone and unmuting myself again, top tip. Um, so can you just go back through? So to tip, you need to talk and to talk, yeah. you need to... Clock, C-L-O-C. Okay, so right, well, you carry on with that, and I'm going to go and type some notes up on that for everybody to view. So um, you, and you can see, hopefully, the notes that are popping up here. Please do add, if, when you hear comments that you love or quotes that you love from Jason, please do add them in the comments and, and keep the chat going. Uh, and we can ask him, we can ask him the, the questions uh, at the end, or we can ask him questions afterwards as well if you're watching the replay. So keep, keep them coming, because we'd love to find out more. So let's get on to habit number three, which is is tick to talk, talk to clock. You're on, Jason. Yes, well, it's the other way around. It's clock to talk and talk to tick. But it's <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'll explain that now. Uh, clock stands for contingencies let opportunities commence. So you've identified the opportunities in talk, but in order to be able to go forward with confidence in those you need to have some contingencies in place now once you've got contingencies there they are there to cover the worst possible conditions or the, the worst possible outcome so if you've got contingencies that allow you to cover all the risks then you can be relaxed over those and look for the opportunities so it's important to, to put contingencies in place. And in my case, the contingencies were when I came out of the hospital, I was told I'd never walk again. And so I had, to, I had carers to, to get me in and out of bed twice each day because not only couldn't I walk, I couldn't even stand on my own. So the carers were my contingency there. In case I'd never walk or stand again, I had, I had carers to... to uh, to get me into bed. And the other big contingency there was to have a good physio. So the physios allowed me to be somehow re relaxed over the possibility that I wouldn't walk and gave me the opportunity then to, to see how I could walk. And as, as I progressed with more and more physio, then each time new opportunities came along. I was able to take them and move forward with them. So the contingency there were the physios, but I also had an electric wheelchair in case if I couldn't walk again, then I'd have an electric wheelchair so that I had some level of independence. So I would say that in order to take the opportunities, you need to have contingencies in place. So the way it goes is 
To tick, you need to talk, and to talk, you need to clock. So without the contingencies, you're not able to identify the opportunities. And those are the, the three sort of habits, I suppose, that I would like to, uh, to leave people with. Habits that are applicable to any situation, and particularly to businesses at the moment. And through sharing my story, my aim is to hope to help businesses be able to look back in 13 years' time and say they were in the top 5% of those that survived. And that's exactly what the position I'm in now. 13 years ago, I have an accident. 95% of people die from that level of accident. So 13 years later, I could look back and say I was in the top 5%. So my aim with TikTok Clock is to help businesses look back in 13 years' time and say we were in the top 5% of people that survived COVID. I, I, I think that's, that's that's so relevant at the moment, especially at, at, in early 2020 with so much going on and so many fears. And I know people's mindset. I know, Jason, you've been speaking with communities and sharing your TikTok clock story. I love this again, another quote from your, from your website and from your LinkedIn page. You help businesses thrive in crisis using your TikTok clock. Um, and hopefully those are the three the three habits. I was busy typing them up as we went along. So hopefully that all makes sense to, to everybody who is watching here with us. Yeah. Today. Well, um, yeah, that, 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 is, that is what I'm aiming to do for businesses with my TikTok clock workshops and program. But I think the bigger message I've got to give is to those people who are suffering from brain injury as I did. And that's why I, myself and Liz, we're setting up a charity now, which is to give hope to people. So it's actually Hope After Brain Injury Trust, because we know what it's like to have no hope. And I said to Lottie earlier that there was a point where Liz was told, if he doesn't wake up today, he'll never wake up. And this was, this was on the first day of the day, the first anniversary of the day we'd met. So I knew in the depths of my coma, I knew Liz needed some hope. So I struggled to come around out of my coma and give her some indication that I was still alive. And I did wake up. And then when the doctor told us I'd never walk again, we, we were almost lost all hope again. And my aim now is to tell people our story so that Anyone else who's suffering a brain injury like we went through is told if he doesn't wake up, he'll never wake up or he'll never walk again. Mm. So by telling a story, we want to give hope to people that as long as you stay strong. I mean, I don't want to give false hope. You know, I know there will be people that probably maybe won't make it through, but I think there's lots of people out there that, would be in the position that we, they, we were in. And uh, that's why I want to be able to send that message out and tell people by, by telling them our story that there is always hope. Well, I, I, I love it, Jason, because I've, I've heard you share your story a couple of times now through various different professional speaking communities. Um, and uh, to, be, to, be in, to inspire the professional speakers at the level of which you, you were speaking with amazing speaker David Heiner, Frederica Roberts at one of the events, they've been around as professional speakers, inspiring motivational speakers and young people all across the UK and around the world themselves. Um, but for them to be so touched, and actually it's emotionally causing this to me because of I, I know you focus on brain injury, but for me with MS, with the brain, blur, the brain buzzes, the brain blur, um, brain blurts, brain burps, brain bum outs, whatever. <laughs> so when you can't remember the words, it, it, it's truly inspirational for me, this that you have created and the habit that you've created here, because I want to show now um, below, Part of what you're creating with your habit, yes, the habit that Jason is talking about, and I want to, to get into this now for a few minutes. 
Jason and Liz have created Habit because it's the hope of the Brain Injury Trust, and I will type that out. But they're also doing a very special fundraiser, and I'm going to bring a photo of that on screen. This, bring this back on screen because this is with, with you, with Jack, are uh, on the screen here. Let me do a solo with that. And this is your Just Giving fundraiser page. Crowd, crowd so think, Jason, how much are you hoping to raise with it? Well, I've set the target at 1,500 euros, pounds, um, because that's the kind of sum that I would need to set it up as a trust. So, so tell me about the trust and what you are going to be doing with the Hope After Brain Injury Trust. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, well, the idea of that is to be... So many people have said that our story is so inspirational that it would be selfish of us to keep it to ourselves. We need to get out and share it. So I've been doing that voluntarily for several years now, going around to talking to other brain injury groups and groups of medical people. And I, I, I've never wanted any payment for it, and I'm just happy to do it to help people. And so I want to continue doing that. And some of the, the funds would help us to allow us to keep doing it for free and travel around and things. But also we're, we're, we're writing a book that we'll be publishing some, later this year. So uh, the money would be used, if, if needed, need be to uh, get the book out there to the people that need it. But the other idea, longer term, is that if we can raise funds through Habit, that we would then be able to give some grants or funds to people who want to take on physical challenges as part of their rehab. So if there's someone like me who wanted to enter marathons, say, uh, we could then help them on that way and give them some money towards it. Uh, I'm not quite sure if we able to fund someone to walk to the South Pole, but... Uh, Certainly any uh, reasonable amounts of physical challenges that people want to take on, then Habit would be able to, to fund that. So that's the idea of Habit. Um, and the oh, other... I love it, Jason. I'm, kind of, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to flick around and put pictures up and put, um, put quotes and comments that you've got, got here um, into, the, into the, the stream as well. So let me just hide those. Um, because, uh, Jason, you are doing part of the fundraising, as you and I had a conversation a while ago, you said you wanted to shave your head. That's part of your talk that you're sharing at the moment. Tell us the reason, because I, I loved how you described it, you, you, that you don't know what's under here. So tell us what you're actually doing as part of the main fundraiser this weekend and who is going to be doing it for you? Yes, yes. Well, if anyone knows me, uh, they'll always know I've had a fine head of hair and I'm very, I've, it's, I suppose it's been one of my trademarks, I suppose, in a way, is the amount of hair I've got, um, which I should, I'm very fortunate to have at, at my age, I suppose. Um, but underneath it all, there's a kind of, almost like a moon landscape, I suppose you might say, um, but there's a there's a big titanium plate in here which fills the hole that they made in my skull to let to get the uh, hematoma out, you know, release all the pressure initially. And then there's boreholes at various places over my head where they had to drill holes to relieve the pressure of hydrocephalus. And then in the back of my head here, there's a permanent shunt which drains the fluid from my brain down into my stomach. So that's a permanent thing to stop the pressure building up. So I've always been fascinated to see what it looks like. I think it might look a bit like a bowling ball with holes all over it. So you could, <laughs> if you could, uh, you so, know, imagine a... So Jason, what, 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 what are you actually going to be doing or what is somebody going to be doing this weekend? We're, we're, we're trying to get push for the last bits of donations, because I think you're on about um, seven or 800 pounds right now. Um, and so if we can yeah. double that over this weekend with what's happening, tell us what you're actually doing this weekend. Right, well, Jack, as you all know, Jack has been 
involved in this our story right from the start, being six months, being born six months after my accident. Anyway, Jack is going to somehow get through this lot of hair. Um, I think he might have to start with a lawnmower or something to, <laughs> to get through. Um, but Jack's going to shave it all off for me. And um, I know he's a bit reluctant because he's, he's only ever known me with this amount of hair. So uh, I've got some clippers and scissors and I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to actually use my own shaver, my own razor to finish it off with and then polish it with some coconut oil, I think, just to, just to uh, see the whole thing in its full lumpy, bumpy glory. And it'll be... Um, done at noon, noon on uh, Saturday. So the, the idea is that the mood will rise at noon on Saturday where my head becomes exposed after 13 years. So uh, that's what I've, I've been asking people to sponsor me to do that as a, just a, as a stunt, I suppose, and a part of uh, the way of, of funding habit. So... Uh, you know, I'd be very grateful for anyone who would like to sponsor me to shave my hair off and help towards a good a good cause to help to give hope to other people who've had a brain injury. I've been saying I love it, I love it, I love it a lot recently. Um, and the, the top thing. But so you're actually doing a 4th of July. It's may the 4th be with you or the 4th of July. Force at 12 noon UK and Ireland time, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. And it'll be live, live broadcast, live streamed on Facebook and YouTube. So everyone can see the evidence that I'm actually following through on this, this so challenge. Your, so your, Facebook, challenge. your Facebook page is um, at the Jason Le Majorier Facebook page. Yes. And, yes. and are you go are you going to be tweeting tweeting all the links and everything out about that on your on your Twitter? I will. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, and let me just well, while you just just remind us once more about the time, Jason. I'm going to add your Facebook page here. Yeah. Yeah. So to remind about the time, did you say? Yes, It'll please. Be, please. Um, just, just, and, and, yeah. and uh, is is Jack looking forward to um, to shaving everything off your head? Not at all. No, he just he doesn't want to do it. But I'm going to oh. uh, encourage him along to do it. Uh, but it's also actually going to be part of something we've got happening here in Bunkran at the moment, which is called Feel Good Fortnight. And this is a sort of wellness and health and wellness well being um, two weeks in Bunkran. So. Uh, I suppose I'm a pretty good example of someone who's bounced back from a pretty dismal state of health to someone who's doing quite well. So uh, we're going to have it as part of Feel Good Fortnight as well. So uh, I, I, love, I love that Feel Good Fortnight, and that, that's Bunkrana is in um, Donegal, isn't it? Northern in, in the northwest, right up the Inisho in Peninsula. That's right. And and so if people want to see you doing your uh, shaving live, let us remind us again where where they can find you, Jason. I'm just trying to find your Facebook page so I can pop it up here. Yes, yeah. Well, I'm not quite sure that how the technology works, but um, I'm sure Lottie is going to uh, enlighten me as to how I can do this and. Put a link on my Facebook page, which will allow you to access my um, live shaving at noon on the fourth of on Saturday. So the moon will rise at noon on Saturday. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And let me just update that. So the Facebook for Jason uh, is uh, facebook.com Jason Le, Jason dot uh, and he is just giving the page. He's been scrolling along the bottom here. If you can afford to spare something, we know right now. Um, oh, let me just come on screen again. Jason, we both know that times are tough for people right now. So um, if you can afford to give anything for Jason's fundraiser and the fun of shaving his hair off. Jack, I, didn't, I thought Jack was looking forward to it. I didn't realise he's going to be quite 
quite scared to actually do it for you, Jason. Oh, probably think he's only 13. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I do have, an, as I was talking about earlier, in terms of contingencies, the, my contingency in this case is that I've got my youngest daughter, Jenny, staying with us at the moment. So uh, she'll be the contingency if Jack bottles out at the last minute. <laughs> See, there you go. Another great habit after a brain injury, brain injury, the tick-tock clock, have your contingencies. We've already learned that one as a habit, winning habit today. So, um, yes. so Jason, with the, oh, and here you go, my brain has now suddenly gone whoop of what I was, what I was saying there. Um, so, the, the kids are there ready to shave you. Oh, and that's what I was saying. If you can afford to spare something to help uh, help out habit, hope after brain injury trauma, uh, for which trust. is Jason, trust, sorry, trust. Hope after that's brain trauma. Trust, yeah. That's what habit stands for. If you can um, afford to share anything and you want to, uh, to give, then the Just Giving page is down at the bottom. Otherwise, please come along to Jason's Facebook uh, and watch the shaving at, let me just put that time up on screen again, come along to the Facebook page and it is at 12 noon, 12 noon um, GST on Saturday, the 4th of July. I tell you what, America, that'll, uh, that'll kickstart your 4th of July parties because that'll be your, that'll be very early in the morning for you. So. Uh, if you want to kickstart 4th of July by just giving or by just sharing a Facebook post so that we can get that page going out more, even more. And uh, by sharing our videos and our chats that we've been having today on Facebook and through YouTube, we really, really appreciate that too. So, Jason, thank you so much for coming on screen with me. Especially the effort to get to record this, folks. We spent three hours trying to try to get the tech working to do this. Well, we, we thrived in the crisis, didn't we, Lottie? We, we did. We thrived in the crisis. The, the brain, the brain was a buzzing, and I think the biggest lesson I learned through all of this, which is actually a live stream lesson to confidence on camera, is patience, calmness. I just thought of you. As my brain was going, oh, tech mess, tech mess, it's all going wrong. Oh, I feel so embarrassed because Jason is having so many troubles. <sighs> yes, well, to... that's, where the, that's, that's where talk comes in, you see. We, the ways we thrived in the crisis was we took the opportunities consciously. We didn't panic. We didn't jump and leap from one thing to another. We actually just sat and contemplated what was happening. And we managed to. So by talking, we managed to tick. And here we are, having completed our interview and thrived in the crisis. Oh, I love it, Jason. Thank you, thank you. What a perfect way, tick-tock clock, to tick-tock wrap up the show. Thank you, everybody, for joining me and the wonderful Jason Lemajurier, this is how you spell his name as a final bye-bye, and his crowd fund crowd raiser, crowd raiser, fundraiser is down below. Jason, good luck on Saturday. I tell you what, you've got two teenagers there. They'll know how to put it onto Facebook Live like that, Jason. Oh, yeah. Don't even think you need my help. But I'll be tuning in to, to watch it. And I've already made my donations for you because I think your habit. Hope after brain injury trust is relevant for people who've been through brain injuries or people who are going through brain mares like my mind is doing with my MS right now. So big thanks to everybody for watching. Stay on the line, Jason, after we stop recording because we'll take a screenshot photo, which you need to do to market. Even more. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Big wave. Bye, Jason. Thanks, Lottie. It's been a great, it's been a real pleasure to be here with you today. See you, folks.